All I ever wanted to do was to make drawings. That's it. Drawings did a lot for me. Uh, drawings saved my life in many respects. I mean, as I said before, the community was filled with a lot of different gangs. So because of my drawings, I was able to garner a lot of respect and protection for local gang bangers and gang leaders. So drawing literally saved my life. It became a tool, a weapon of my choice. My name is Nathaniel Mary Quinn. I was born in Chicago on April 23rd, 1977. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. I grew up in a neighborhood known as the Robert Taylor Homes of Chicago. Uh, we lived in uh, apartment 604 on the sixth floor. I remember that. I was the youngest of four brothers. That was myself, the youngest, the baby, and then my four older brothers, uh, Charles, Richard, Eugene, and Michael. My mom uh, was Mary Quinn, and my father was Joe Peterson, but he was indeed my biological father, for sure. Uh, both of my parents were illiterate. They could not read or write. My brothers all had their own separate problems. My oldest brother was a drug addict. I had another brother who was an alcoholic. Another brother who was a, uh, some sort of a street hustler. And of course the uh, last brother had his battles with forms of drug addiction and other bad habits. The Robert Taylor Holmes was a very uh, volatile community filled with gang culture and um, drug transactions. All of the families living there were poor. Uh, there was a severe lack of resources, that sort of thing. Uh, it wasn't all bad. We had our moments where we celebrated Christmas and Thanksgiving. But for the most part, this community was heavy laden with tremendous shortcomings. This was a community that was incredibly efficient at killing dreams and bringing death to all forms of hope for a better and more optimistic future. When I was a kid, I began drawing on the walls of the apartment we lived in and uh, my mother would spank me because she thought that I should not draw and mark up the walls, which is the right thing for a mother to do. However, one day my brother stopped my mom as she was going to spank me and he encouraged my mother to look at the drawing I had made. At that time, both my brother and my mother learned something about me. They learned that perhaps I had a real gift, a talent for drawing. And that's where it all began for me. And uh, it held on to me ever since. That's all I ever wanted to do was to make drawings. That's it. Drawings did a lot for me. Uh, drawings saved my life in many respects. I mean, as I said before, the community was filled with a lot of different gangs. So because of my drawings, I was able to garner a lot of respect and protection for local gang bangers and gang leaders. So drawing literally saved my life. It became a tool, a weapon of my choice that did not kill anybody, but it made people feel uh, good about me. And, and I would draw a little pictures of them and I made them feel good about themselves. So that was the power of art for me from a, a very young age. And then life goes on. You know, I think at some point I got to go to a private boarding high school. During my first semester into this high school called 
Culver Academy High School. My mother died. Uh, I went back to Chicago to attend the funeral services for my mom. And a month later, it was Thanksgiving break. So I'll go back home expecting to have Thanksgiving dinner with my father and my four brothers. And upon arriving home, I was confronted with an empty apartment, no furniture, no family, and they were all gone. And I have not seen them since that night or that evening. And I was 15 years old then. So that was it. I was without family ever since. Today, I am um, 46 years old and I still have no contact with them, which is part of the reason why I make so many works about them. Um, so as it stands, I'm in Paris for my first solo gallery exhibition with Gagosian Gallery, The Forging Years. And in this exhibition, I tell a narrative of the circumstances surrounding the death of my mother because I have come to realize that I never had a grasp on exactly how she died and uh, in any case that event put me through the fire and through that fire I was forged into a new identity that created a new lens through which I see the world hence the forging years. In my work, I am always exploring the, uh, I, I call it the rainbow-like spectrum of humanity, identity. Identity is the amalgamation of different fragments of the self. You know, there are different things that come together to create who we are and what we are. And then we learn to find harmony with those fragments of ourselves. Fragments that are in your life because of your life experiences, you see? So, you know, if you, if you attended a church in your young years, that's gonna impact your identity. And then if you had a certain kind of mother, that's gonna impact your identity. And if your father was a certain kind of way, that's gonna impact your friends, the community in which you grew up. And whatever the case is, your identity, who you are, is nothing more than an amalgamation of different fragments and stories of your life. And so I try to find ways to convey that in my work. You know, most people spend a lot of time trying to present a seamless, perfect self to the world because most people don't have the courage to be honest to the world about who they are, you know? Like, it's easy to express anger. It's more difficult to express sadness, fear. And I, I like exploring that because in my work, I also utilize a high level of vulnerability and empathy in my practice. Gestalt theory is um, a form of psychotherapy that helps one to deal with the whole. That's what just thought means. Whole, all of it, all together, right? Because most times when you go to therapy, they just focus on you talking. Just thought theory focuses on everything. Talking, being action, movement, drawing, painting, or, you know, the intellectual um, curiosity, how you feel, and they, they try to focus on how you feel now, as opposed to getting stuck in the past or being preoccupied with the future, but dealing with the now, how you feel now, being present, you know, and using 
all the uh, assets you have at your will from speech, listening, movement, dance, singing, whatever you must do to um, activate how you feel in that moment. And just thought theory is used um, uh, as a way to deal with depression or anxiety or social anxiety or other kinds of disorders or personality issues you may have, historical pain, angst, stuff like this, you know? So, um, and I found that uh, the, that particular research to be uh, a, a really good means of, of creating a dialogue around my work and my practice, uh, where I'm bringing many different things together in that moment, how I feel now, and, and, and using many different um, avenues of the expression, both verbally and physically, um, particularly painting and drawing, to create a whole, like to bring it all together and see what is happening in this very moment. And that's, so that, that, that research helped me to gain a bit, um, you know, a stronger conversation around the work of the current show here in uh, Gagosi in Paris. You too went through forging years, for sure. That's why you are here today. Something you have gone through in your life for some amount of time um, that forged you and molded you into a new thing. And anytime you're being forged, you're going through the fire. You're going through something. And this is not like, it's not always, oh, my family blew up in a building or my dad was shot in the head. It's not always that. It's at, at its base, it's always emotional. It's always psychological, always. It's always that, you know? Even when you have your first breakup, you know, your first love, these things change you and you, then you learn to live with it. And sometimes you come out on the other side whole or you don't. It's best to try to come out whole <laughs> because if you don't, you know, this is going to be very devastating for you. So that, that, that research helps to create, um, give a um, dialogue around the work. That's pretty much it. Yeah. This work is called Superjet. Now, the reason this work is important on, the, on its face is because it's a vision of the work I've been wanting to make for the past 10 years. I just made it now for this show, and not because it's the show, but because I felt that I was finally uh, proficient enough to make it. That's why it took me such a long time to make it. I didn't feel like I was good enough as an artist to make such a work. But I've had the vision of Superjet for 10 years. And it always looked like that. Always. And every year I would think to myself, can I make Superjet this year? And I'd say, no, I'm not there yet. Because I wasn't skillful enough to do it. But Superjet is the name of a grocery store that used to exist on the south side of Chicago. And my mother would go to this grocery store to buy groceries for the house, for my family, my four brothers and me. And the four figures in that grocery cart are my four brothers. And the grocery cart not only represents the cart that could be used to carry groceries, but it also represents the bars that function as the facade of the tenement housing in Chicago because the facade of the um, Robert Taylor homes, they had these bars in the front. You know, they were like, um, they kind of zigzag like this. So the bars represent that too. They represent imprisonment. Are they breaking out of it? Are they being stuck in it? But what, what imprisonment was the case for them? You know, of course, my brothers were imprisoned by their own addictions. Even the floor upon which the cart rests uh, represents the different colors of the Robert Taylor home. Some buildings were kind of whitish, off-white, 
others were kind of like a red, like a maroon red color, you know? Um, so all of those colors come into play to help give um, presence to the community in which they live. And um, also, uh, considering that my mom's life was taken, it also marked the end of the experiences of her going to Superjet and buying groceries for the collective that once existed. We were a family. We were together. And now that's gone. So I wanted to revisit that memory of what was once a, a collection of people living under one roof. I personally always push the message of persistence and um, never giving up on, on your dreams. That's it. Um, no matter what you have endured or gone through, um, you can get through the fire and you can, you can become newly formed in a very beautiful you and achieve the greatest things that you want to achieve. And if you get the chance to come to Paris, it's a beautiful city. I would love for them to stop by the gallery, enjoy the exhibition and have a good time. You don't have to stay very long. And then you can leave and go to a really nice restaurant and treat yourself to a nice meal and a, and a wonderful glass of red wine. I mean, that's, that's just as great as far as I'm concerned. <laughs>